Today on the show, we showcase smart farming technology in diary that has seen Gaza Diary Farm improve management and realize bountiful yields. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. The first thing to know about diary animals is that their immunity is lower than the beef animals. It is important that you do fencing and keep them in a certain closed environment. That's the first thing. So there is little interruption from the outside in terms of animals that bring in the disease causing ticks. Today on the show, we meet Dr. Patrick from Gaza Dairy Farm in Busika. He gives us an account of how his passion has been his driving factor in his farming journey. Running a dairy farm is as rewarding as it is challenging a profession that incorporates knowledge and experience of several areas of agriculture and animal science. This farm is unique and it's evident right from the onset when we arrived, the cows are milking. The uniqueness of this farm is that uh, we've focused on uh, creating good genetics because in a system of zero grazing you need animals that have the potential to produce a lot of milk and don't fall sick so often. In other words, they are problem-free animals and they're not so big. So all that can be controlled by breeding and genetics. And uh, that's what we've been doing over the nine, nine years that we've existed with cows. So most of these cows you see on this farm were produced on, the, on this farm. They're not bought yesterday. They have been here and they are children of former cows that we had on the farm that kept going out as they give birth to new cows. And we entirely use uh, a system of uh, artificial insemination and uh, in artificial insemination we are careful to choose the right bull for the cow that uh, will give us the qualities we, we want in, in that cow. Uh, that is good milk production, good health traits and good, good, good udders, good conformity as you've seen when they are milking. The udders are not so big but they have a lot of milk uh, that, they, that comes out of them. On this farm, a cow is cherished and well taken care of as it is showcased in this exercise. It's important to get into dairy farming wholeheartedly and with a positive attitude. Many inexperienced people have become successful dairy farmers just because they enjoy working with the cows, have the ability to make good decisions, pay attention to details, do not mind long hours and confinement to a schedule, and are innovative in their ideas and actions. The cows simply respond. Cows uh, have a time clock in their system. Uh, they, 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 the milk production of a cow uh, of course it depends on its genetics. The genetics of these animals is that they are made to produce milk. But for them to produce milk, they need to be well managed. And in management, there are three important things. What you put in, that is water. You should have a clean source of water, which we have. Our water is from a shallow well. And then you should have feeds. And the feeds should be in the form of a balanced diet. There are feeds that give energy, those that give protein, and even the minerals. All those feeds should be available for the cow. Because imagine, uh, and, and it concentrates all these feeds into the milk that you see that comes out. The 14 liters, the 15 liters you've seen that come out of the cow. It does that. It can do that every eight hours. And it means that for a very efficient system, you can milk this cow every eight hour uh, period. You, it, you milk it, it feeds, it drinks, it rests. The, now, for you to efficiently get the maximum out of this cow, you need to be very spot on with the milking. That's why we are using a machine, so that it can be done very efficiently and fast by one person. 
and then you should be spot on with the feeding when they come from the milking area they should start feeding and drinking and when they are done with that milking and, and feeding like you found these cows they go and sleep in their beds we've prepared the, those beds you can put their sand or anything that is soft okay uh, here we use residues uh, that are dry and we fork them often so that they are dry so the cows will sleep most of the time they are sleeping and then until and uh, as they are sleeping they're chewing the cud and making more milk so that is the cycle of the cow if you keep that cycle very well they will give you milk and the, the challenges with farmers is, is is not understanding that physiology of the cow but when you understand it and you look after the cow very well every and you have the right genetics it will give you the milk uh, every eight hours so the the of those three that i've told you the management or, or comfort the feeding and also the genetics the most crucial is the feeding in uganda uh, it needs to be very well mixed and mixed properly so that the cow doesn't choose out feeds to f and whatever and, and we will not yet there even on this farm if you go to very 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 you know developed countries you see the food is almost like you cannot separate and and say cob or whatever but we don't have the machinery as yet but we are we are going to have it in the future as we develop the, the, the enterprise but that's what we call a total mixed ratio and then for genetics the best genetics that you have in cows is what you make on your farm people like to go and get cows from abroad but i've, I've been through everything embryo transfer all those kind of technologies and whatever and cows and it's rare that people sell the best genetics that they have but for you you can produce the best genetics and keep it on your farm if you persist with modern breeding methods like especially artificial insemination with careful selection of the bulls and with sex uh, semen because sex semen they have sieved out all the male sperms the y chromosome sperms and it has 95 percent of the sex female chromosomes and you are able to have most of the time heifers when you go around my farm and look at the calves and the heifers they are no bulls it's because we use the sex semen much as it's a bit more expensive so that's the, the second thing. With dairy farming, having good genetics on the farm is important because that genetic makeup plays a great role in the variation of milk yield and composition. The services of, uh, of semen are uh, got from, from uh, two sources or three sources. We have government, that is uh, Nagrik, Entebbe. Uh, then we have uh, NGOs like Haifa International and then we have the private sector the private sector I work with the private sector my personally because the private sector gives me opportunity to even order for semen I want from the US uh, you, 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 me I, I research about bulls so I choose a bull and I, I order it maybe two months in advance and they bring it for me uh, to serve for that season so uh, I, that's why I work with the private sector but those are the three sources by and large and they, they, they have distribution centers around and they, they, are, they are trained artificial insemination inseminators also around so you get one who works for you but when the farm becomes big like mine you can hire a manager that knows how to do artificial insemination and you can get a nitrogen can which you keep refilling and put in your straws in advance. Because one of the frustrating things about uh, breeding and artificial insemination is uh, sometimes the farmers get re late response. This guy you are calling has to serve the whole mukono. So you, you tell him my cow is on heat, but he has got six other calls and he has to move to different villages. By the time he reaches your cow, because the heat takes like 12 hours or so, the cow is already out of heat and sometimes that cow doesn't get pregnant. So it discourages farmers.
This June, Seeds of Gold has focused on dairy farming majorly. If dairy farming is to be profitable, the farmer must become competent in many areas of management and be able to handle the various, sometimes conflicting concerns of the cattle. A smart technology app, Uniform Agri, has been added to the portfolio of this farm, making the life of farming so easy and more appealing. We also focus on record keeping. We have records of these cows for generations and we also keep records daily. The records we keep are in now in a computerized system that has been provided by Uniform Agri and we take the records of milk, the records of uh, the cow from birth, the records of the reproduction of that cow and the, the disease uh, incidences in, in that cow and even its genetics in terms of the mother, the grandfather, on both sides. That way, we avoid inbreeding. And we are always on time in knowing when to serve the cow, knowing when to take some actions to make sure that we are on time. Because every year, each of these cows has to produce a calf and also give us milk. With this app, a farmer is able to monitor the farm entirely and so effortlessly from wherever they are. It helps the managers attend to all the essentials as it will keep reminding you and updating on a daily. The computerized software of Uniform Agri, as a farmer, an elite farmer who has other things that you're doing, helps you to keep track of your animals even when you're not there. That's one. Two, it helps you to respond appropriately uh, to, to the seasons of the cow. Uh, by the seasons I'm talking about, for example, the, you have to know when to stop milking it two months before it calves down. Some of these cows have a lot of milk. By that time it's still giving milk. So if you don't use a system, you may milk it until it's, it's almost calving down. You, you, it gives you the information about when you should be serving it with semen to become pregnant again and and when you should be checking on it for confirmation of pregnancy so in other words this system is very good and also it it promotes for you graphs and you can have trends of how the milk is coming in in this cow how consistent is it and that kind of thing so it it is a, a, a very comprehensive system when we are in the milking parlor and uh, our cows are milking uh, we go in our phone, choose the application, then search for the cow number. The cow number that just milked is number 46. We click search and we have our cow, the number and the name. She's called Jalia. Then we go to the component and choose uh, milking. It is showing us that today, 17th, our cow Jalia at 7.33 need, has milked, so we enter the yield here. She gave us 12 liters. We click done, click the stick, and now the information has been sent from the milking parlor through the phone to the computer in the office. So when, when we come in the afternoon for the second milking, we go through the same process. We come in, we open our application, search the cow number number 46 we search number 46 our cow she's called Jalia we choose the uh, icon for entering milk you see there is a list here of many options but we choose milking and we choose the time when Jalia has been milked and we enter the yield she gives us more 12 liters we put the 12 liters here we tick and now the information goes to the uh, computer in the office. We make acquaintance with the farm managers who are responsible for the day-to-day -day running of this business. So currently the system is working very well. For example, I want to take you through the milk uh, recording as well as uh, breeding and also maybe the, the, the number of the cows that we have in the farm. Let us start with, uh, with, with milking, for example, today. Uh, when you look at today's uh, milk production, we can sample up with uh, some cows. 
Kalunji gave us 14 liters in the morning and uh, we are expecting it again to give us about uh, 10 liters or 12 liters in the evening. So in the evening we will just we will just add the the, 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 the total production here for the evening. Then the, the system will will sum up the total production for the for the whole day. If it is 14 liters in the morning, 12 liters in the evening, that's a total of about 20, 26 liters per day. So the system will will keep on recording the the milk production of of each and every cow every day. If it is breeding, you click on breeding. If it is a pregnant status or pregnancy diagnosis, you click on uh, on the pregnant status. If it is to dry off, like yesterday, we we dry off about uh, six cows, and we just entered into the system. Yeah. So the system is very simple like that. It can guide you to do everything in the farm. As 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 you can see the hub. Eh? As you can see, the hub itself it is showing you that uh, we have about uh, 31 cows eh, or 11 that are supposed to be served. They will come on it very soon. This is now the, the, the halat, eh, as you can see. Now, for the pregnancy check, we have about 26 cows. We have already served, but uh, we have not yet confirmed the, the pregnancy. So once we confirm the pregnancy, we enter the system. With this system in place, managing the farm has really become easier. It's literally a click away. You find that they give birth every year. So it is about you to record when they will be giving birth, when you will be steaming them, and when you will be drying them. We are able to know how many cows that we have basically by just merely because they are all in the system. <coughs> then what again the system shows us there, the heat signs, because it just it attentions us that these numbers, these cows are going to show heat signs. The same way we're seeing the pregnancy checks, then to, to dry, then calving and tasks. So we're seeing to dry, the thing is zero, meaning we have no cow which are currently drying because now the, the ones which would be there, they would be heifers, but now they are not showing anything. We have to steam them just. Then you're seeing calving of recent, like now these days, we are not having calvings. Then where you're seeing ta tasks, it is normally supposed to indicate for us that that task, you have a task somewhere, so it will indicate in there. That's why you're seeing zero. So the other ones are showing what is going on. You still where you see where you have the graphs. We have the graph showing automatic, then to do external. So those graphs, you will see the first one, which is saying SSP manually. SSP manually, it, at first, that's how the, the system was before you, we, we, we introduced into the final system. We just entered in the things there, and that's how the graphs were showing us, how they were validating. So you see where we're having average milk production per cow per day. You're seeing how they, here, on the first uh, line here, you're seeing our production is 16.2 percent so our cows are their average production so we have average production per cow average of the whole total production we get around 16.2 given what is in the system in there that's why it is supposed to be it's even showing you the calving age uh, doctor explained to you that the cows the, the cows we have here are just in the growing stage that's why you see the, their calving age heifers is almost 26.4 percent. Then the, their average daily milk, their average daily milk records, they range in that range of 250. So when you come here, on this on this data of the system, you see where we have this thing which is like a pie chart. So this which shows like a pie chart. It's the one that gives you all that is happening. Then it gives data about the cow. That's why you're seeing it is having the air tags there. Then this is about the phone app. So if you have a phone app, the system again can connect to, you, to your phone. Then you'll just easily receive the information. Every, every time someone sits on this computer and feeds in the information, then it takes 12 hours. The system processes everything. When you load data, your system will change, it will directly show you. So that's how even our 
the top managers are able to get, like uh, the owner of the farm doctor, is able to access every information because he's using via the phone. Animal health is a very big component on the farm and failure of this has seen many farmers lose animals and even close business. The first thing to know about their animals is that their immunity is lower than the beef animals and therefore uh, it is important that you do fencing and keep them in a certain closed environment, that's the first thing, so there is little interruption from the outside in terms of animals that bring in the disease causing ticks because the tick bone diseases are, are the most common in these animals. The, that is one. Secondly, uh, for those who have a risk, a high risk, then you have to do spraying of the animals. Uh, uh, and if the risk is higher, you spray them more frequently. So here on the farm, we do it once a week uh, because of course you can see some bushes and you sometimes we allow them to stretch a bit outside. So we spray them once a week. Uh, in other systems, which are even more confined and the animals are not getting out, they may spray even once a month. So one of the most important things is confining them in an environment where there's no interference from the outside. That's a very, very important step. Then spraying comes in next because we are trying to control the ticks that may have sneaked in to get onto the animal. And then the other thing that is very important is an animal being fed very well from the day of birth. A, a, a calf when it's born should take colostrum within 30 minutes. Even when it's not able to take it, you have to milk it, the mother immediately and give it that colostrum. It gives it the immunity, the strength to survive uh, going forward. And from that time on, you have to monitor its feeding very well so that it grows when it's strong and it can uh, fight diseases. And I think that's a step that uh, many people miss. So basically that's how we do it. And then secondly, when the animal has fallen sick, they respond very well to, to known medications, uh, they, like for ECF. But if you delay like a day before the medication reaches the cow, it may not survive. So you need to know the diseases and the conditions and the signs so that you can cultivate or you respond yeah, immediately the animals, whatever. And for us, we know the signs of these, of these animals when it's not well. The first thing, it will feed less. The second thing, it will, if it's milking, it will drop milk. The third thing, its activity levels will drop. If you put their feeds and the animal is sick, and you know that it's supposed to be feeding, and it doesn't respond to that call to feed, you, we, we straight away get a thermometer and we take a temperature reading to see whether it's sick. So we, we, we have a system of checking and doing disease prevention. And also, we do some routine activities. One, animals should be uh, dewormed uh, regularly, uh, three to six months. And then also, well, some, there are some vaccinations that they should get for, for some viral illnesses that spread around. But by and large, in a zero grazing system like ours, we are safe from all those animals, those diseases that you hear, FMD and others, because we don't get so much interrupt, whatever inter interaction with other animals and people. And the people who come here, usually if they are farmers, we try to disinfect them, they step in the foot, whatever, and we try to take some of those precautions uh, to see that we don't get those diseases. So we've not got, for example, FMD in the nine years we've been uh, farming. Or, 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 I don't know, those other contagious diseases. Next week on the show... Uh, software of Uniform Agri, as a farmer, helps you to keep track of your animals even when you're not there. You can see that now, what I have in the phone is exactly the same as in the computer. 20, 20 cows are open, 20 cows are open, 20 cows, 21 cows were inseminated, 21 cows were inseminated. So this is... Uh, uh, the way to go, uh, we for sure the future is in line with technology. <music>